The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What's up, everybody? It's the week of December 9th, 2019. This is Might Be Sports. I am Taylor Cooper. I regret to inform you that this is going to be a super short episode. Uh, I've been selected for jury duty. I'm not even allowed to talk about it. It's just been a stupid, dumb week, and I quite frankly don't have time for this shit. Not the podcast, but the fucking everything else. Uh, with me on the line tonight, Kevin Reevy. What's up, Reevy? Hey, am I the ninth caller? <laughs> You're the Did ninth caller. Duran Duran You're the big winner. Ah, this is great news. <laughs> Honey, what? we won. What's the best radio station in the tri-state area? What's the phrase to pay? <laughs> What's up, man? Thank What's going you. On? Thank you for um, taking a break from watching the Irishman to uh, chat with me for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was. This is actually very convenient for me because um, my liver hurts today because oh. I had a I had a big weekend. So this is a good time for me to just chill out on the couch, watch the Irishman and, uh, you know, play Mario Kart on my phone and not drink alcohol. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, this is a good night for me to just chill as well, but for the different reasons I, I was telling the audience, um, before I brought you on that, um, I've been dealing with some jury duty responsibilities It's my civic duty. Uh, but it's a super pain in the ass. It's not local for me, and um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just. So, what do you think? Is he uh, guilty? I can't talk about it. I will talk about it next hey, week, but I can't talk on. about it right now. I can't talk you about it right tell. now. It is not tell. allowed. They told me for they they literally read me a a packet that took him an hour to read. I'm not kidding. Telling me that I can't talk to anyone about it. I'm not even talking to Jackie about it. Um, I will when it's over, but right now, just know that it's a real pain in the ass, and it's not even close to being as cool as uh, uh, any of the shows on TV, Law and Order, and all that shit. At least what I'm dealing with is just super dumb and boring. So, uh, but I, <laughs> I didn't get a chance. I didn't stay up for the whole Eagles game. Did you watch the whole thing, Reevy? Yeah, Monday night games are brutal. Um, brutal, especially when they go to overtime. It's not even that. I'm I'm bad at watching the game by myself, and this was a game where, especially on Monday nights, I'm not going to be able to go out, and, um, do anything, and watch with a group, and which is the way I prefer to watch the game. So I have someone to bitch to. So this that was a rough game to watch by yourself. Yeah, um, for the most part. So actually, not only that, but. Um, I was reading some stuff on my uh, computer and um, when the second half started and I, and you know, Eli got the ball, I, I actually turned the TV off and finished what I was doing, finished what I was reading for a good, like 10 minutes. I didn't even watch the game when I could have. And then I went to, to sleep. I just, I couldn't handle the idea of them getting the ball back already up 17, three and potentially scoring again. Yeah. It's just brutal. I'm not, I'm not good at watching those kind of games by, by myself. I remember it kind of took me back. The last time I watched a game by myself was the Eagles giants two years ago um, with the 62 yard kick, whatever it was um, that I remember I was on my knees in front of my TV. <laughs> and the only reason why I was watching that game alone, it's, it's funny. I didn't even think about this till, till now. The only reason why I was watching that game alone, I left the bar at halftime disgusted with how they were playing. Right. So I get home and I'm like, well, I got to watch the rest of the game. So I, between the drive from there home, enough time it went, went by, I was curious. And, you know, the Eagles said, uh, they started to play respectably. And then I saw they had a chance there at the end and, uh, that started the whole championship season. So, you know, hopefully the Eagles have something like that up their sleeves this time around. Yeah. Um, my biggest takeaway from the Monday night game other than the fact that they realistically played an abysmal three and a half quarters from what I am to understand um, is that they don't have a receiver core anymore. (laughs) 
that they just don't have right. they don't have any wide receivers. So I'm really curious to see what they're going to do about that problem. Um, I would assume that we're going to sign Jordan Matthews again for the second time this season. Um, I don't know, but it's embarrassing to see um, retired players kind of making a, making jokes about this on Twitter. Um, I saw Asante Samuel uh, making jokes on Twitter last night, like, put me in, Doug. You know, I, I can do it better than these guys. That's, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, Reggie Wayne was tweeting from a bar apparently last night saying that he could make the wide receiver core on this team right now. What do you think that they're going to do about the wide receiver position right now? Well, I think the main thing, and it really um, it was more apparent when he's opposite Eli, is that Carson's taken a hell of a lot longer to get rid of the ball. And Eli's thing has always been, and especially it seems when they play the Eagles, to get rid of the ball quickly. So if th- that doesn't always have to do with the receiving core. If you're running plays that are, you know, two or three step drops and you give her to the damn ball. So they still have two of the best tight ends in football. So, uh, you know, the whole receiving core um, in that respect is not completely depleted. So if they can find a way to, you know, mix in those quick shots and add that to the, the offense, which it seems like it's never been a part of the offense, and I'm not sure whether that's the play calling or whether that's Carson Wentz. One of the things that, you know, was the poison pill for uh, for Nick Foles' first time career with the Eagles was that he, I think in general they thought he held on to the ball too long. And that's why they didn't mind really getting rid of him and taking a shot at Sam Bradford. Right. So um, it's not something – it's something I'm always, I've always been sensitive to because I remember – being a big time Foles fan when he, you know, put up that season, what was it, 27 touchdowns, two interceptions in the following year, you know, as much as I defended him, I remember he just held on to the ball too damn long. Yeah. And that's, I'm seeing that all over again this time with Carson Wentz, a big defender of his. And then I'm watching this game and even I was cursing him out. I mean, just, he's got to get rid of the ball faster. But yeah. again, you don't know how much of that has to do with the play calling or if it has to do with the wide receivers. If the guys just aren't open, they're not open. Right. Um, but as far as addressing that, I don't know. I think Des Bryant's still available. He was saying earlier in the, the year that he was going to wait till the end. I don't know how the rules work with that. I'm more familiar with like the baseball rules and how, you know, there's a headline to sign to be, um, to be active for a postseason roster. I don't know how that works with the NFL, yeah. but, uh, you know, Deshaun Jackson, he's going to be back presumably possibly for the playoffs if they get there. So, I mean, I don't think there's going to be anything drastic, but there's three games to go, and they're good enough to beat to, to win these next three games. But, you know, it, it basically it doesn't really matter about the next three games. All that matters is the Dallas game. Because if Dallas loses next week and the Eagles win, it doesn't really change anything. Because if Dallas wins, if Dallas beats the Eagles, they have the tie break. So if next week is kind of meaningless for the most part. I mean, the Eagles still have to win, but whatever the Dallas does next week doesn't necessarily matter unless they lose the last game of the season. Um, I don't know who that would be against, but so I don't know. They're, they're good enough to win these next three games with who they have. And I think that's what they're counting on. And then they get the Sean Jackson back. I hate to sound like, you know, super down, like a downer here. But I just don't I just don't get that vibe from watching them that they're good enough. I mean, I I, I know talent wise that they are. I just I don't understand the slow starts. I don't understand how it takes them so long to get going. Cause quite I think it's just a bunch of guys playing with each other for the first time for the most part. It's just these wide receivers that he's not used to having. And they're a lot worse than uh, – I mean, it's it's not even that sometimes. It's that you got Alshon Jeffrey. I was kind of happy when he went out of the game because, you know, you're either in or you're out. And these guys that are in for a game, out for two, in for two, out for one, 
you don't need that. You got you have to have guys that are there every week. Yeah, They're and Alshon Jeffrey's done point. for the year now. They said, right. So, he, and that's the thing. He's been in and out all damn year. And you had Nelson Aguilar the same thing. So now you know he missed last week, and now he potentially could be playing this week. And it's always off and on, off and on. And at some point, you need to have the same group, the same guys. And I think that's frustrating. You know, Carson, it's difficult. Uh, it's a difficult thing for the wide receivers to deal with. So the combination of all that, it's like this constant preseason that's been going on with the offense, and they're not in sync. And they they were in sync week one, and you saw that that had pretty good results with uh, Deshaun Jackson and Carson Wentz. And I think that's what they were planning on, but they probably put a little too much stock in that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I just, I just see a team that's just kind of fractured. They're just, you, I, I agree that, you know, the receivers are obviously bad. Um, and the chemistry isn't there. That's clear. I think the defense, the, the, uh, specifically the secondary is a joke. The wide receiver core has been a joke all season. I, I get that they're not mathematically eliminated. I think that they could win, win out, but I'm, I'm basically in better luck next year mode. I know it could be, I know it could be too soon. It's just, it's hard watching these guys play right now. I don't think anybody like you, you know, can, can deny that it's hard watching this team play right now because you know what they're capable of. You know that they, I mean, they, they obviously have a bunch of the same players uh, from the Super Bowl, I think that's part of the problem. Um, but like, they've been there, they've done this. I just don't. A, they're too banged up. B, they're just not playing like a team. And C, it's just they're too slow. They're too slow at everything. Getting out, getting the ball out, running routes, uh, keeping up with people running route. They're just too slow. And for these teams in the playoffs, they're hungry. They're hungrier than these guys. I mean, obviously, if they win out, they'll they'll bring up some momentum. That's what you need going into the playoffs. I just don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's well, I'm not, I'm it's not really intimidated by any. Uh, you know, if I'm the Eagles, I'm not too intimidated about any team coming out of the NFC. And I don't know who the best is of the lot, but. There's no team like the Rams last year out there. Uh, the Saints are good. Uh, the uh, the Seahawks are good, but the Eagles already played the Seahawks tough. I don't. I think you take Russell Wilson off that team, and they are remarkably average. Yeah, I agree. And um, the Saints have a little bit more talent, but I mean, I, I just don't think there's a team out there that the Eagles can't beat. So just get to the playoffs, and everybody. In this city, and all the, the Eagles fans collectively right now, everybody's, I think, with you for the most part, very pessimistic, wait till next year. But it can happen. You just got to get to the playoffs. And it, everything changes, especially this year, of all years this year. I mean, for God's sakes, the best team in the AFC is the Ravens. And I think they can be had. I mean, what, what are we looking at with Lamar Jackson? Finally. He gets hurt. Pretty psyched about that, by the way. <laughs> I was just about to say nobody likes <laughs> nobody likes to cheer on it, it, injuries. But I mean, if we're all being honest, you were wrong. Was, in, you were wrong little, until you were right. A little validating, which was just one of those things. And you know, I'm starting to turn the corner, to be honest, and starting to say, well, you know what? Everybody can get hurt at any position at any time. So yeah, whatever. They, they don't know how long he'll be out. I don't think he's going to be out long, if at all. But I, I also think it's one of those things where um, there's a reason why, you know, to turn it back to baseball, there's a reason why your best offensive player doesn't play catcher because he's going to ruin his knees. He can't be back there for too long. If you got a guy that's really hitting the ball well, he eventually moves to first base. Well, there's no option like that for a quarterback. So does his career end at 29? Because it's, that's the way it goes. There was one exception to that rule, and it was Mike Vick after spending, what, two years out of football, and he had fresh legs, and even then he only maybe got a year and a half of decent play after that. 
So it just doesn't exist once you hit 30. So if that's the end of his, even if everything goes great, he's done at 30. I don't know. I don't think it's a sustainable thing, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think once the playoffs start, it's going to be a whole different animal um, with them. If it's not the Ravens, who's the best team in the AFC? I guess maybe the Chiefs right now. But again, all the teams I'd be afraid of are in the AFC. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm not not intimidated by any team there. So you just got to get in and then shoot. Who are you going to put up against the Eagles? Any team that they match up against, I feel good about as a fan of the Eagles. And if they do win out, everything changes. We talk about this all the time, how everyone's so reactionary and, you know, opinions change week to week, no matter how ugly the wins are, if they finish the year (laughs) on a four game win streak, people are going to be psyched. The Eagles are back. Yeah, man. It's just the way it's going to be, especially if they win like three ugly ones. And the last one's like a real killer. Yeah. Like they, they win by like 30, then people are going to be in, And all it's going to take is like one great game by Carson Wentz to like finish off the regular season. People are going to say, oh man, we got all the momentum nationally. People are going to be pulling out the dog masks and all that again. And it's going to be the, the trendy pick. So whatever we're feeling right now is totally irrelevant. We'll have to see. I mean, it's like I said, it's not even necessarily next week because it all really hinges on that Dallas game. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, you touched on baseball. I want to touch on, uh, a couple recent moves that the Phillies have made um, and get your opinion on them because I don't know much about either one of the players. Uh, they got Zach Wheeler a little bit ago. I guess he's a pitcher from the Mets. And yeah, and it's... Apparently they got yeah, Zach Wheeler. Didi Gregorius from the Yankees. Yes. Well, that's, that's, that's what they're saying right now. Yeah. On a one-year deal, apparently, because he's... Uh, he had Tommy John surgery, uh, I guess, a little over a year ago. But um, so he's kind of betting on himself in that regard. Um, he was hurt uh, a little bit last year, and yeah, not his typical self. But the word on him is that you put him in the right situation, the right ballpark, and he's healthy. He's going to hit thirty-five bombs a year. So that's you know really nice to have out of the shortstop position. And I don't know if they released what the price was on that for one year, uh, but $14 million I, deal. I, I'm seeing just 14 million. Wow. That's, that's a really good deal. That's crazy. I would have thought it would have been like 20 or something outrageous, but yeah, that's a really, really good deal. I wonder, um, maybe that's just where he wanted to play and shoot. Um, yeah, it's a little surprising, but that's a great deal for the Phillies. Uh, they have Gene Segura at shortstop, and he's no slouch. Um, I think he's got at least this year left, so they'll presumably deal him, or they could deal Cesar Hernandez, although he might be a free agent. I'm going to double-check that. But um, either way, you'd be. I would presume they would look for like a bullpen arm for Segura, and if they have to move him to second base, he, he'd be a pretty great second baseman. If you don't have to lose his bat by bringing in uh, Gregorius. That's pretty amazing. And then as far as uh, Zach Wheeler goes, he's one of those guys where right now in free agency, it just seems like if you want one of the big guns, I mean, Cole Hamill signed for uh, what one year, 20, two, 23, 24 million, something around there, just something crazy. And that's a guy I would not be surprised if Cole Hamels has like a five ERA next year. He could be done and spend over $20 million for one year for him. So just to have a free agent arm right now is ridiculously expensive. So for the price they got for Wheeler, the fact that it's under even 30 million when Garrett Cole might get 35 to 40 from uh, the Yankees per year, Pretty good deal for Wheeler, and he's one of those guys where um, and he finished the second half really strong last year. Uh, was one of the best pitchers in the National League in the second half. Got a real power arm, but he's also a Tommy John guy. That being said, a lot of the pitchers out there are Tommy John guys. So, I mean, I think uh, Garrett Cole uh, might have gone through that himself. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he might have. So, it's just kind of the way things go with pit- pitchers. It's like a 50-50 shot at some point. They're going to have to have Tommy John. 
So you don't really worry about that too much. He's still throwing 98 plus power arm. And if he's an ace, it's a great deal, but either way, he should be an upgrade over pretty much anything they have there in the rotation besides Nola. So any way you slice it, they did a really good job. The only criticism there with people has been they're not building the team like they did in 2008. It's not coming up through the farm system. It's all free agents for the most part. So that can work. Just cost a shit ton of money. Very interesting. I, um, I saw the, I just see that they're making moves and I'm excited about it because obviously they need to do something. I was glad to see that, uh, Zach Wheeler signing, uh, he's a starting pitcher. Um, and in your opinion, that's a, that's a great signing, um, which makes me even more excited. Yeah, and they're not that – I don't think they're that far off. And last year they had some injuries. And it, it could be one of those things where if they get everybody back and everybody's healthy. The, is McCutcheon um, coming you know, back? Do you know if McCutcheon's, if, if, uh, McCutcheon's coming back? Yeah, he's signed. He'll be back. Okay, good. And that was a, it was a, a big loss last year. Yeah, you know, big, time. Was, um, big time. Big time. He wasn't the player he was, but he's still a guy that – really knew how to get on base was a leader and set up the rest of the team and things kind of went south when he went down but he's i think he had um, a uh, an on-base percentage north of 370 and that's something you just can't replace in the lineup so you got all these guys coming back and i didn't think on paper their offense was that bad last year but at least they had one year where they they, they know what they had and they know, they know how to improve so you know now you know Michael Franco is not the answer. And now you know, you know, what you have with Gene Segura. Now you know um, what you have in Bryce Harper, whether or not you want to potentially move on from Reese Hoskins. You, you know a lot more now than you did last year. It's just more information. And from just getting Didi and putting him in at shortstop, that's, that opens up a bunch of other options where if, if you were just write out their lineup right now and um with Bohm coming in potentially their uh rookie to play third base he's a big dude um he's like six four six five so they they're talking about him maybe not playing third base long term but if you pencil him in and he's as good as he's supposed to be you write down this lineup and it's pretty intense so you know, we'll see how it goes because last year on paper they were a lot better than the year before and things didn't work out too well. But I think this time around, again, they just have more information and they know how to fix those problems. And, you know, hopefully they have. Well, they're under new management as well. So I think that that's going to be uh, something to look forward to. I'm, I'm excited right. for the Phillies this season. I'm excited. I'm excited about the moves they're making. Um, it was kind of a – it was a dull summer without good baseball here in Philadelphia. Um, and after a, a mediocre at best season from the Eagles performance wise, um, it's going to be a welcome thing. I, I, I think, uh, just to touch on the Sixers real quick, because I'm getting ready to end this episode so I can go watch some, <laughs> some Sixers. Um, I think they're on a, what, as of right now at this recording, they're on like a three game winning streak or something like that. They look really good. One guy that um, I wanted to touch on quick and uh, is more or less my clear cut go to the week, uh, Matisse Thibuel, the, the the kid, the rookie, uh, playing really good basketball right now, really good defense, um, and he's dropping threes. And I'm loving what I'm seeing from this guy. Love what I'm seeing from this guy. Um, I think that the Sixers – are really starting to kind of come come together, come alive a little bit. Um, I follow I follow most most of the starting lineup. I think I follow all of the starting lineup actually on on Instagram and stuff like that. And one thing that I've noticed this season <clears throat> is just how dialed in I feel like certainly Ben Simmons is, and I feel like he's even more active kind of in like more of a positive way on, on Instagram. Like he's, he's excited. He's making posts about games. Um, and, and the captions are, I feel like are a little bit different than they were last season. Um, I think that, that 
he's more into it. You know, he, he made another three the other night. Um, I forget which night it was, what game it was, but he made a nice, another nice looking three. Um, I'm excited for the Sixers. What, what are you, what are you seeing from them? Are you, are you as excited as I am? Yeah. And I think with a team like that, and we were talking about, you know, with the Eagles and needing preseason and gelling and, coming together, if they're going to be a really great defensive team, that's going to take time. And that might take a, you know, it might take the whole season to see that kind of come together. It takes, it just takes a lot of time for that kind of thing to work itself out. But um, I think that's what they'll eventually be. And you hope that it all comes together come playoff time. So uh, as for right now, it's just, it's just one of those weird NBA things. And, you know, analytically if someone can figure this out and solve this thing where for some reason teams can't win on the road and the Sixers have really struggled in that regard. It, yeah. it just seems like every time I see they have a road game, it's like, man, I want to, as much as I'm not a gambler, just jump on my uh, sports betting account and just bet against them. Cause it's just, it's always been that way in the NBA for whatever reason. I don't know why, but if you could figure out a way to solve that, you talk about, you know, the shift in baseball and how they're, you know, they're watching film and all this and doing the very little minute things to just sway the percentages in their favor. What is the deal with the home field advantage in basketball that it's so much greater than any other professional sport? I don't really understand that. And whoever solves that is going to make a ton of money for themselves, but if you're dominant enough, like the Lakers, it's not an issue. So the Sixers need to get to that point, but it just depends if they have that killer. Is it going to be Embiid, Ben Simmons? Are you building a team that's kind of like the Pistons were a little over a decade ago where um, you don't really necessarily need that number one guy? You just have a bunch of kind of number twos like Rasheed Wallace, Rip Hamilton, Chauncey Billups, uh, Tayshaun Prince, Maybe they're trying to build that kind of team. That can work, but you have to be really, really great on defense. So luckily they could be. So um, with every loss, sometimes, you know, people sometimes feel like the sky is falling. And if you look at where they're at in the standings, you know, they're not one of the top three teams yet, but uh, record wise, not too bad. I think there's something like, you know, 16 and seven, 17 and seven, somewhere around there. Yeah. So they're right where they need to be, and come playoff time, I think they're going to be one of the the top teams in the East. I agree. I'm really excited to see where they go from here. Um, I also want to uh, thank you, Kevin Reevy, for being on the show again tonight, uh, for calling in, taking some time out of the Irishman. Uh, uh, I'm going to go enjoy some of the Sixers here. i got to edit this episode and put it out. Um, again, I'm sorry out there to everybody for the short episode next week. Finale week is going to be much better. Um, we're going to have a special guest on the show. We were talking about it earlier. I'm excited about that. Um, pretty exciting. Yeah, man. It's going to be great. We're going to, things are happening. Season finale week, uh, actually starts tomorrow with the all new might be bruised. It's the season season finale. It might be bruised. And, uh, might be tunes is coming up on Friday. And then it's the uh, next week is the season finale week of all the rest of the shows here on the network, including this one. Um, we're going to do a, a full episode next week. That's a guarantee. Uh, this dumb stuff that I'm dealing with will be over tomorrow. I thought it was going to be open over today and it's not. So I got to go deal with it again, bright and early in the morning. Kevin Reevy, I'm going to hit the button now. You won't be able to hear the music, but it's playing. We're out of here. Great job this week. Have love a you. <laughs> I love you too, man. Thanks so much for being on with me. We'll see you guys next week. Reevee, peace out, man. See ya.